I'm just thinking like you got Bitcoin, Ethereum, you mentioned, are they like different currencies like we have in the traditional sense or are they platforms? What are they? Okay. So, so you've got two different terms, but the same word. So you talk about Bitcoin and the Bitcoin blockchain. So Bitcoin is the equivalent of money that is being moved around. You talk about Ethereum on the Ethereum blockchain. So there's, there are many different blockchains. There are many different um, tokens. Um, in terms of are they currencies, accountants don't think they are. You don't treat them as currencies. But some of them have the same properties as money. And in some places, they are treated as money. So if you think about money, it's got to be a store of value, which Bitcoin and larger cryptocurrencies are. You've got to be able to pay for goods and services and settle debts with it. So a medium of exchange, medium of exchange, store of value. Ah, can't remember what the third one is. But there's this idea of you can pay for something. The first time somebody paid for a thing with Bitcoin was reportedly two pizzas for 10,000 Bitcoin in 2010. That would be worth quite a bit now. But that was the idea. You can actually pay for things. In, in parts of Switzerland, you can pay your municipal taxes with cryptocurrency. In um, El Salvador, you can pay for your vet's bills and you can pay for all sorts of things within their Bitcoin ecosystem. They actually have, they actually use Bitcoin as one of their national currencies. So yes, it can be used. Different cryptocurrencies are used as if they were money. Honestly, we don't need that here in the UK and, and in Europe because we have really good financial services. But for people who don't, it's actually really useful. And that's the bit that I think I struggle with because I think in my mind, as soon as someone says cryptocurrency, I go, oh, that is money. And it's another form of yeah. money. It's a value. It's a representation of value. That's effectively the third thing. It's a unit of account. Right. So our, our ledger. So you, you can use it as a unit of account like we do with cash. So you've got a 20 pound note and you can work out the accounting for that. So yeah, people talk about cryptocurrencies because they, they behaved like money. We now talk more about crypto assets because they behave in different ways. So cryptocurrency is one part of that family tree. So actually the new book that's coming out is getting started with cryptocurrency because everyone recognizes what that means, but it's an introduction to digital assets and to blockchain. So it's very clear it's, it, the, it covers the whole family tree and it covers the technology as well. With cryptocurrency, I'm guessing the value changes over time. How is that decided? Yep in that world? It's not decided by anybody. It is, it's the similar question of why do tech stocks go up and down? And there are macroeconomic factors. There is confidence in the market. Actually, an interesting comparison is that with any crypto asset that is issued, there is always technology beneath it. There is some kind of reason for issuing that. So uh, you look at what the thing actually is supposed to do as part of its software. So comparing them to tech stocks is actually quite reasonable because it, a lot of the value actually depends on how useful are they. And we're start, there's, there are new blockchains being built that run incredibly fast. So for example, it takes an, on average about 10 minutes to generate a block on, a, on the Bitcoin blockchain, it runs at about seven transactions per second on average. We've got new blockchains coming out that are closing a block in less than a second, and they are processing very high numbers of transactions. So they're, they're rivaling the Visa network and so on. 